Gyana Timaranda Sya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chaksuran Militanyena, Tesma Shri Garave Namaha, Vanchakau Patarubyascha, Kripa Sendu Bhaivacha, Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavibyo Namona Maha, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda, Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavanda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We're reading the Brihad Bhagavatamrita and we're on the first part of the, the second chapter, uh, text number nine. We're hearing how Narada Muni is searching for the devotee who had received the Lord's mercy. So his search began, first of all, when he was at Prayag, he saw a Brahmana there, and he thought this Brahmana was really very, very pious, and it, it, it appeared to Narada that he had received the greatest mercy from the Lord. But after Narada Muni approached the Brahmana like that, the Brahmana denied it and he said, no, no, no. He said, you should go to the south and in the south there's a king there and that king, he is really the greatest devotee. He's really got the greatest mercy of the Lord. But the king, when Narada Muni went there and he saw the king and he, he thought, yeah, this, this king is really wonderful, he's a great devotee, he must be the real recipient of the greatest mercy of the Lord. But the king said, when the king heard this, he said, no, no, I'm not, I'm very fallen. He said, better you should go to Indra. Indra, the king of heaven, he's really got the greatest mercy of the Lord. So Narada Muni went to heaven and he saw Indra, how he was being worshipped and how Indra was worshipping the Supreme Lord and he thought, yes, Indra is really a great personality. And so we are beginning from this point. Narada Muni is describing why he thinks Indra is the greatest devotee. Narada Muni says, demigods like Surya, Chandra and Yama and even the rulers of other planets, they all obey the orders of Indra. And Narada Muni continues, to glorify Indra, he says, Narada Muni says, sages like myself are your subjects. 
In the Vedas, you are praised as the Lord of the universe. Yeah, you're considered the Lord of the universe because you give the fruits of religion and irreligion. And so, uh, Sanatana Goswami explains that the there are principal demigods, there are, you know, there are many, many demigods, but there are, among all the many demigods, there are principal demigods, like the Vasus, the Maruts, the Rudras, and the Adityas. And all of these different demigods, they all obey the orders of Indra. And in the in the in the Veda, in the Rig Veda, which is the first the first of the four Vedas, many of the hymns are prayers to Indra. And these different prayers describe the glories of Indra. And in the Rig in the Rig Sutras, in the Rig Suttas, Suttas, there are the Indra hymns which praise Indra as the Lord of the Universe. So Narada Muni agrees that it's proper and that that Indra is the king of heaven, that he's, his power, that he, he's given the power to send pious souls. And Indra is, so Narada, Rama, Narada Muni feels it's only proper that Indra is the king and by his power Indra can arrange for pious souls to come to heaven. Yeah, that, that, that example that his power to send souls to heaven, that is proof that Indra is the king there. So Narada Muni continues, he, he's glorifying Indra, he says that it's very wonderful that Lord Narayan has become your younger brother. Lord Narayan has become the younger brother of Indra. And they were both, both Indra and Lord Narayan were born of the same womb, the same mother. Indra and Narayan, they were both born of the and Lord Narayan is always very respectful to Indra. So Sanatan Goswami explains that the greatness of Indra is spiritual as well as material. 
。萨纳纳的高沙米说。Injured 的伟大之处呢，既表现在灵性上，也表现在它在物质上和灵性上都是伟大的。嗯 ，because Lord Narayan becomes his brother, so that's not material. 主纳尔呢，成为他的兄弟，这可不是一件物质的事情。And not only is Lord Narayan born of the same womb, but he becomes a younger brother of Indra. So that's under a position under Indra. He not only is the Lord, he is born from the same womb, and he also becomes the son of Indra. This position is even higher than Indra. He becomes the son of Indra's father. So in this way, Lord Narayan teaches by his own example what is the proper behavior. How to respect the senior brother? Uh, Lord Narayan, in this position, is teaching the elders how to respect the senior brother. And Lord Vamana Dev, who is the younger brother, he is always he always does whatever Lord Indra tells him to do. Indra's elder brother, Lord Vamana Dev. 嗯，总是对对主英者的命令呢，就是坚决坚决的执行英者的命令。So now we're going to hear Maharaj Parikshit speaking. Maharaj Parikshit is, remember, he's the original speaker of this Brihad Bhagavat Tamrita, and he's speaking to his mother Uttara. 接下来是嗯 Parikshit 的大军讲话。我们要记住 ，Parikshit Maharaj 是这部《大波加法坛甘露》的主要的讲述者，他在对他母亲讲话。So the sage among the demigods, meaning Narada Muni, declared the ex declared Narada Muni was speaking about the good fortune of Indra. And Narada Muni was so joyful that as he chanted the glories of Indra, he played his veena and he danced. Narada Muni 如此兴高采烈，以至于他弹奏起自己的维纳琴，并且跳起舞来。And when Narada Muni had visited. Earlier, he gone to the king. The king in the southern region. At that time, the king in the southern region had told him that the demigods are the real persons who they've really received the mercy of Lord Vishnu. Narada Muni 就回忆起他去南方那个国王的国家的时候，国王宣布说，半神人们是主的。仁慈的真正的接接受者。So Narada Muni took the opportunity to describe all this to the demigods. Narada Muni 于是借此机会就开始向半神人们开始描述这一点。So Indra welcomed Narada Muni in a very, in a soft voice, and very humbly he said to Narada Muni, he said that Narada. You are expert in the arts of the Gandharvas, so why are you making fun of me? In Indra, 于是就呃以一种柔柔和的声音，谦卑的说道：“我亲爱的 Narada， 您擅长甘达瓦歌仙的艺术，您为什么要嘲弄我呢 ？”So the Gandharvas are very they 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 have. Special powers, and they can be very tricky. They can very be very clever, and it's very difficult to control them. Gandharva, 天堂的歌歌仙是非常聪明的，而且他们也有一嗯也有一点点心计狡猾，所以很难控制他们。So the People, if some somebody trained in the in the、uh, the arts of these Gandharvas, if they know the things which the Gandharvas know, they know how to control others by praising them and by 
ridiculing them. 一个就是受到过 Gandhava 的这个艺术训练的人，就知道如何通过赞扬之词以及嘲讽之词来操纵别人。So Indra knows Narada is not just an, an ordinary Gandhava, but still Indra is enjoying the, you know, it's, it's a, like a, a humorous exchange. Is talking to Narada Muni in a humorous way. He knows Narada Muni is not an ordinary Gandharva. Narada Muni is a great sage among the demigods. Among the, among he's a great sage among the all the the demigods and and he's a great devotee also. Indra knows Narada is not an ordinary Gandharva. Hmm. 他，而哪吒是半神当中伟大的圣人以及伟大的奉献者，他只是这样来享受，呃，跟哪吒的之间的这种啊开玩笑、幽默的交，幽默的话语。So Indra is going now. He's speaking to Narada Muni, and he's telling Narada Muni. He said, "You know, I, don't you know about what what it means to rule heaven?" 嗯，英哲就告诉哪吒的梦里说：“呃，你难道不知道统治天堂意味着什么吗 ？”And don't you know how many times we demigods have to run away from heaven out of fear of the demons？ 你您难道不知道有多少次我们这些半神人由于害怕那些恶魔们而逃出了天堂吗？ So Sanatana Goswami explains that Narada Muni may he may deny he may deny praising Indra or making fun of him. Sanatana Goswami 解释说，哪吒的也许是呃会拒绝赞扬 Indra 或者是嘲讽 Indra。So Narada Muni,、uh, Indra can understand that Narada Muni might object to what he's saying. Indra 明白，拿着木尼也许会矢口否认他的话。Because Narada Muni was praising him. So Indra is going to argue against the praise which Narada Muni had given him. Because Narada Muni was saying that Indra is the dearest devotee of the Lord, so Indra knows this, this is not really true. 因为拿尔的母女宣宣布说，英卓是主最亲密的奉献者，而英卓心里很明白，这这句话并不符合事实。And the Radha Muni also knows about the troubles the demigods have in trying to keep their position to rule, to rule the universe. 拿尔的也明白，半神人们在。试图维持作为宇宙的统治者的地位的时候，会遇到种种麻烦。And the demigods, many times they get defeated by the demons, and they have to leave their kingdom. They have to leave the heavenly planets. 半神人们多次被恶魔们嗯打败。And sometimes they even have to disguise themselves, and they may disguise themselves like sannyasis. 有的时候，他们还必须得乔装打扮成萨尼亚西、科波松的样子逃走。And they may even hide themselves. On sometimes they come to Earth to hide themselves. 有的时候，他们来到地球上，把自己给躲藏起来。So Indra is defeating the arguments of Narada Muni. Indra 就这样在嗯驳倒拿着穆尼的话
Narada Muni had been influenced by the king, that king in the southern region had told him the demigods are the greatest devotees. And he, the, the king had told him that the demigods live, they live in, the, in heaven and they act and travel with however they like. They can travel and, and act as nobody can tell them what to do. And so Indra continues, uh, Indra continues, he, said, he says that one, one of the demigods, well this is not Indra speaking, but this is, who is it speaking well? I guess it's Maharaj Pariksit. Oh, this is not clear. Pariksit, oh Pariksit. Anyway, one of the demigods once took over as Indra. He became the king of heaven. One of the demons actually once took over as Indra and became the king of heaven. That was Bali Maharaj. Now Bali Maharaj was born in a demon family, but he was actually a devotee. So Bali Maharaj came with the army of the demons, which he was the commander, and they defeated the demigods. And then all the demons, they took all the positions. One of the demons became the sun god, and another demon became the moon god. And Bali Maharaj himself, he, 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 took, the, he took Indra's share of sacrifice. So Narada Muni had told Indra that the sun god and other rulers of planets all obey the orders of Indra. So to reply to this, Indra is explaining, is explaining that there is no real value to the demigod's power. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, connection. Okay, are we here now? Oh no, still going. Okay, are you still there, Guru Mani? Yes, Maharaj, we, we can hear you. Uh, uh, okay. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, but sometimes it's breaking. Sometimes. We can hear some sound in the background. Right, yeah. Okay, we'll keep going. Yes, uh -huh. okay. So, Indra... Now, now it's very... Can, can you repeat the sentence, last sentence? Yes. I'm going to. So Indra is explaining to Narada Muni that the demigods don't really have any power. Indra就回应Narada Muni说到半神人们实际上并没有什么控制的力量。
the demigods are always worried about losing their position. So what is the point in glorifying somebody whose position is so uncertain that he can be kicked out of his position any time? And Indra, Indra remembers that one time he almost died from hunger and thirst when Bali Maharaj took his position. Indra, 呢特别的。羞愧的回忆起，当巴里占据了他的天地的地位的时候，他差点儿因饿死和渴死。And Bali Maharaj was taking all the share, which is the share of the sacrifices, which was meant to go to Indra. 而本来应该献给 Indra 的那一份祭品，被巴里马尔就拿走了。So this is Indra responding because the, the southern king had told Narada Muni that the food of the demigods is the nectar of immortality. Indra 就这样回应了那位南方国王的话。那国王声称，半神的食物是不朽的甘露。But Indra is saying, "My position. I'm very, I'm very unstable. Sometimes even I have, I'm starving. Sometimes so hungry, I'm so thirsty, and I have no. I, I often get kicked out of my position. I lose my position as Indra." Indra 就如实的回应这这个话说，呃，我我的地位特别的不稳固，呃，我有的时候甚至是饥饿交加。Uh, 我, mm. So the father, Indra's father and mother, at that time, then performed many austerities, so that they could satisfy the supreme Lord, Vishnu, who is also known as Achuta. Uh, 就在那个时刻呢。嗯，英者的父亲和母亲从事了许许多多的苦行，嗯，以这些苦行，他们就满足了至尊主威士努。威士努也也有另外一个名字叫阿丘塔。So the father and mother of the demigods they were worried about their children because they could not enjoy their position as demigods. They were being kicked out. 作为父亲和母亲，呃，英哲的父母他们就很担心自己的孩子的安全。作为半神人的地位，也失去了他们自己的地位，他们被从天堂给赶出了天堂。So that was why the Lord, Lord Vishnu, appeared as the younger brother. Of Indra. 正是因为这个这个原因，所以主才显现为 Indra 的弟弟。So Indra didn't take. He, he's Indra's minimizing the Lord's action in coming as his younger brother. He's. He's he's not giving a lot of importance to it. 主显现为英哲的弟弟，呃，英哲呢对这一点呢并没有太看重。And it it wasn't Indra who prayed for the Lord to come; it was his father and mother who prayed for the Lord. 并不是英哲本人祈求主呃降临，而是英哲的父亲和母亲。And the Lord came only after 
uh, quite a bit of delay, not an easy request. And when he did come, then the Lord was not willing to manifest himself fully in his original form. And when he came, he, he didn't kill the enemies, but he only embarrassed me. And he gave me back my kingdom. He took it from Bali and gave it back to me. But he, he didn't kill anybody, but he just embarrassed me. He made me feel this interesting that I felt embarrassed, I felt ashamed. And he took that kingdom from Indra in a tricky way. There's a little Lord Vishnu tricked him a little bit and he got him to give him charity. And in this way he took the whole kingdom away from him. So Sanatana Goswami explains that Indra felt that the Lord didn't treat him very well. The Lord didn't fight for the demigods' right to get back the kingdom. But the Lord just he tricked him. He tricked the demi. He tricked, he tricked Bali Maharaj and the demons to get back the kingdom, to give it back to the demigods. And the Lord came as a dwarf, and at that time he asked Bali Maharaj for just three steps of land. But when he took the three steps of land, the Lord made himself huge, bigger than the universe, and he took all the universe. So sorry, there is some delay in the okay. signal. Mm -hmm. Maharaj? Uh -huh. oh. You mentioned yep. there is a sorry Maharaj. Where did you get Can to? Can you repeat? What was the last thing you did? You said? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What was the la what were you saying? What was the last thing you got to? How far did you get? Hare Krishna Maharaj. You can't hear me, huh? I cannot hear you very clearly. We cannot hear you, the whole sentence. The, the, so the I, sentence I, I don't know from... what you said last. I'm not sure where we got to. Where's, what's the place? Where to begin from? I don't know where to begin. You, you, you mentioned that uh, it, the, the Lord asked Bali for justice. Three steps of land and 
make himself like a, something universal form, like something like that. Yes, that's right. Yeah, he covered the whole okay. universe. So that's it. Okay, okay. Mm. 就是, um, 主, 主就, uh, 恳求三部土地的布施之后呢, 他就, 他就展示为一个巨大的形体, 他就覆盖了整个的宇宙, so Indra is explaining about the demigods, how actually they have faults and they're often jealous of each other and they rival each other for positions. Uh, and if we do things like killing a brahmana, then we get reactions for the sin. And, we, and Indra said, we are always afraid of losing our position. So we don't really get any happiness. Now the king, that king from the southern region, he had said that the demigods are always worshipped by men. And the king had given examples. But the Indra is replying. Indra is not accepting. He's disagreeing. And, and Indra is saying that the demigod Indra is saying the demigods actually are not fixed in goodness. And he's reminding Narada Muni, he's telling Narada Muni that the demigods are quarrelsome. They argue with each other and other people. And Indra also says that, you know, when demigods are not always sinless, because Indra himself, he had killed a, a person called Vrita Sura. And he killed also Vishwarup, and he killed others. These were Brahmanas who Indra killed. He killed Brahmanas. And he, and he also says that their bodies are not effulgent. Because the demigods are always worried about losing their position, so they're, they're not so happy, their bodies are not effulgent. And there's a statement by Lord Krishna, when Lord Krishna was speaking to Uddhava, Lord Krishna is describing, he said that it's not very pleasing, it's not very nice to die. And everyone in the material world is just like a condemned man. Uh, 
Just like when a man is condemned to die, he will be taken to the place where he's going to be killed. So there's no happiness in that. So even you have objects of sense gratification, you're not, if you're going to die, you're not going to be able to enjoy these objects. So Indra is saying actually the demigods don't deserve to be worshipped. They're not much better than ordinary men. So then Indra says to Narada Muni that you should know that my brother, Lord Upendra, meaning Lord Vishnu, Inten intention intentionally disregarded me. You know, this Skype is not very good, Sati. Sati, this Skype is not very good. Yes, Gurmara. I can hear you. I think we have to use some other server in future. This is not effective if it's so much problem with this. Mm, yeah. Okay. No, it's not. now it seems to have stopped again. Mm. I can. We can use it. I can. Okay, we can use Okay. Moment can. Okay. Next next time. So Indra is saying that Lord Vishnu he didn't take he didn't pay any attention to me. He took away the Sudharma Hall. And he took away the Parijata flower from heaven and he brought them both to earth. I told him not to, but he didn't listen to me. So Indra is showing to Narada Muni that he doesn't have any special favor from the Lord. Although the Supreme Lord is Indra's brother, but Upendra doesn't just always do everything what Indra says. And Upendra also came to earth in the form of Lord Krishna. His original, the original form of Upendra is Lord Krishna. 
and Lord Krishna appeared on earth in the family of the Yadu dynasty. And at that time Lord Krishna was living with his wives in Dwarka and at that time one time Krishna came to heaven and he took away the Sudharma Hall and he took away the Parajata flower that only grows in heaven. And Indra brought them down to earth, he brought them to Dwarka. And the earth planet, the people on earth are definitely not on the level of demigods. And on the earth planet, everybody dies. There's a, you know, there's a lot of influence or fear of death on the earth planet. It's not there, that's not there in the heavenly planets. So, so Indra feels it was not proper to bring the Siddharma Hall and the Parajata flower down to a place like Earth. Now Narada Muni, he was praising Indra because Indra possessed the Parajata flower. But Indra says, no, I, he's only, he feels ashamed because, because the, the, the because Krishna stole the flower away from him and brought it to earth. And Krishna brought them to devotees who are more dear to him. He brought them to the, the devotees in Dwarka. So he, Lord Krishna doesn't care about Indra, he doesn't, he, he put Indra to shame by taking away these things from him. So but Lord Krishna wants to please the people in Dwarka. He doesn't care about Indra. So it said that when a for a, when if a devotee feels dissatisfied, that if he feels himself, you know, I'm I'm not a very good devotee, then that is a that is actually a part that is good in devotional service. 对一位嗯对自己并不感到满意的奉献者，有这种感受的奉献者，嗯，就这种不满意的感觉，实际上是奉爱服务的一部分。and Indra, it shows that Indra has natural humility. And other Vaishnavas like Narada will meet, other Vaishnavas, Narada will meet, will speak. Oh, the, the different people 
who Narada Muni is going to see, they will all speak like that. They are very humble. They will always speak less about, they won't glorify themselves. They'll say, no, I'm very fond. Now each devotee thinks that Krishna is doing something good for them. He's doing something, Krishna has a special favor for him. But Krishna always acts to satisfy the devotees who are dear to him. And if someone praises a devotee, if you if somebody says that, oh, you got Krishna's mercy, then the devotee will not usually accept. He will say, no, no, I didn't, I didn't do anything. Mm. And if he, if, but sometimes if the devotee doesn't do that, we shouldn't find fault with him. Mm. Devotees are naturally humble and, and, and pure, if they have pure devotion, then they will speak with humility. And sometimes devotees are, who are very intimate devotees with Krishna, sometimes they will speak with transcendental anger. So if they have anger, that is called pranaya rasa. But a devotee can never actually prove that Krishna doesn't favor them. Because Krishna is always pleased with his devotees. So Indra is speaking, he said, uh, he ruined the worship the cowherds had been offering me for many years. So Indra is remembering how Krishna stopped the cowherd men in Govardhan from worshipping him. Indra and these cowherd men have been offering me this worship for many years, but Krishna stopped them. And another thing Krishna did was he burned down my favorite forest called the 
Gandava forest. Yeah. That Krishna had persuaded all the people headed by Nanda Maharaj not to do the Indra Yagya but to worship Govardhan Hill. And he told them, just use all the paraphernalia you have for the Indra Yagya, use that to worship Govardhan Hill. And the other thing was, uh, with the, the, the forest, the, there was this forest, Gandava forest, which was very dear to Indra, but Lord Krishna allowed Agni, the god of fire, to eat it. It said Agni had a stomach ache, and so Krishna arranged that Agni could eat the forest fire. And at that time, Indra's own son, Arjuna, helped the, helped, uh, he helped uh, Agni to eat that forest. So when Krishna was supposed to kill Vritasura, what happened? There was this one demon, Vritasura, he was devouring the three worlds. So Indra wanted Lord Vishnu to come and to kill the demon. But Vishnu wouldn't do it. Instead, he told Indra, you have to do it yourself. So this Indra killing the demon Vritasura is described in the Rig Veda. And it happened when the planets, when the Brahma was doing the creation of the planets. So at that time, Vritasura interfered with the universal construction. And he kept the oceans, he kept the oceans trapped inside mountains. So the sages, the sages of the Rig Veda, they glorify Indra for killing the demon Vritasura. And when he killed the demon Vritasura, then he freed the waters. All the water of the universe could come out. 
Angel 杀死了微尘魔之后，他便把宇宙的这些水，宇宙之水就从这个束缚当中解放出来。But here at, at this time in the Brihad Bhagavad Gita, Indra is not making. He, he doesn't think it's very important. He makes it just a small thing. 但在这部《大波加瓦唐甘露》这部书当中 ，Indra， 嗯，并不认为这件事有什么了不起。And in the sixth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, we learn that Vritasura, although he appeared like a demon, he was actually a pure Vaishnava. And Indra shouldn't have killed him. It was actually a Sin for Indra that he killed him. Indra 本不应该杀害他。Indra 杀死他，就招致了罪恶。And then Indra is going. He's describing more about his problems, the 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 things he did wrong, and and the thing and his dealing with Lord Vishnu. And he describes. He said that. Lord Vishnu didn't care about me. He destroyed. He even did, he destroyed my capital, Amaravati, and he built a new residence above all others for himself. Indra 就继续呃讲述了自己的问题，他他的嗯他的尴尬之处，他描述说。主，他根本就不尊重我，他摧毁了我的首都阿玛拉瓦提，并且在为他自己在所有其他的建筑之上，他建设建造了一个新的居所。So here, Indra is talking about an incarnation of Lord Vishnu called Vaikuntha, whose name was Vaikuntha, and it's described in the eighth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. 在这里 ，Indra 就嗯指 ，Indra 指的是主 Vishnu 的嗯，主 Vishnu 名叫 Vaikuntha 的这这样的一个化身，这是在《圣典波加瓦谭》的第八篇当中描述的。So it's described from the combination, from the combination of Subra. And his wife, Vikunta, there appeared the supreme personality of Godhead, Vikunta. From Subra, Subra and his wife, Vikunta, appeared the supreme personality of Godhead, Vikunta. And he appeared along with the demigods, who were his. Different expansions. He and those demigods appeared together, and these demigods were his personal 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 Which is worshipped by everyone. Just for the joy of the goddess, the goddess of the goddess, in 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 the goddess of the goddess. 嗯，是在呃这个世界当中被创造出来的。All right, Lord Vaikuntha produced this planet, and it it got the name Rama Priya, meaning it's very dear to the goddess of fortune. 主瓦昆塔创造了这个星球之后呢，给它命名为 Rama Priya， 意思是对幸运女神非常
And this planet is above all the other planets, it's even above Lord Brahma's planet. And this spiritual planet or spiritual kingdom, which is within the material universe, is never created and never destroyed. But we know, we also saw that it was created at a certain time and a certain place. So we think it's like a new planet. And it, it, it's actually a, a manifestation, it's an eternal manifestation of the kingdom of God, but it's within oh, but it, it's an eternal manifestation of, of the spiritual world, which is now the spiritual world is outside the material nature. But this planet which he created, that's within the material nature. So the Lord sometimes pretends to create something as a pastime. But actually he's, he didn't create anything. What he's doing, he's just showing us something which has been there all the time, but usually we can't see it. So Lord Indra also talked about this incarnation, Vaikuntha, and it was described in another scripture called Hari Vamsa. So after Krishna had taken the Parijata flower from heaven and defeated Indra, at that time Indra said, he said, uh, he said, Lord Vishnu sacked, sacked my capital city. He got rid of my capital city and he built a new planet above all others. It's described in the eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam how this incarnation of the Lord, known as Lord Vaikuntha, appears. And he appears during the fifth manu called Raivata. So this was a long time before 
before this this person put this person got the position of Indra. This happened long before this the present person who is Indra. He had not come in position at this time. So Sanatana Goswami gives two possible explanations how Indra could have met this Lord Vaikuntha. Sanatana Goswami he says one possibility is that that uh, Indra met the the incarnation Vaikuntha on a previous day of Brahma. It was another day of Brahma. Or during the fifth Manvantara, the Lord only conceived the idea of his new planet. But he didn't actually build it. He did the construction during the seventh Manvantara. Now is the seventh Manvantara. Okay, so we'll stop here. Hmm,好的。嗯,我们之前当课有两个问题留下来。好。第一个问题是,呃,Samara 和纯粹的了, well, that's why we have definitions. What is pure devotional service? Pure devotional service means we do it without any material desire. We don't think about getting anything from Krishna, material. Simply serve, we serve Krishna constantly and it must also be favorably. If we are serving Krishna with other motives, then it's not pure devotion. And if your devotional service is not steady, in other words, it's st you stop and start, then it's not pure devotion yet. So we have to understand what is pure devotion. We just want to please Krishna, to serve Krishna, and we will serve Krishna continuously.
Have I answered the question, Guru Mani? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yes. Okay. Next, next. Matura, Maya Polila. Mai 怎么办? You can translate. Yeah. Mm. We, we, sometimes we met with difficulties, and sometimes there are tests, and we suffered a lot from them, from all those difficult, from those tests and difficulties, and, and our face become weak at that time. And sometimes we become even depressed, and, and we uh, we prayed for the Lord, and we chanted, and we even told our problems to other devotees, but that will not help. So under the circumstances, what should I do? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well. You have to you have to strengthen your faith in devotional service. You sh- you have to understand there will be tests, there will be difficulties. You can't expect there won't be tests, you can't expect there won't be problems, there will be problems. You have to overcome them. You have to go on with devotional service. You have to be more determined if you're going to take up devotional service seriously. You have to become more convinced in Krishna consciousness. Yeah, you want you want people to help you, but you have to help yourself. Everything is there. The devotees are there, they're doing their service. You have to do your service. So you have to become more steady in your devotional service. You have to learn to be stronger and to stand on your own feet. The material world is a problem. There are going to be difficulties here. You cannot avoid them. You have to be ready for them. So you have to become a very, you have to become very serious devotee that no matter what happens, you're not going to stop chanting, you're not going to break the regulative principles. 
续的成为一个认真的奉献者，无论发生什么事情，都永远不停止念诵，并并且遵守那些规范原则。Every day you have to be very strict in chanting at least sixteen rounds and very strictly following all the four principles. 每一天。您都必须非常严格的念诵十六，至少念诵十六圈，而且每天都要严格的遵守所有的四项规范原则。And then you will see gradually the difficulties which you are thinking, the problems actually they're all there in your mind. It's your mind which is the real problem. 那逐渐的，您就能够发觉，所有这些困难，所有这些问题，都是在您的心意里。实际上，您的心意才是问题所在。We're all here in the material world, and we all have difficulties. We all have problems. We all get tested. 我们都在这个物质世界当中生存着。我们都有问题，我们都有困难，我们都要面临考验。So you have to become more convinced that Krishna consciousness can help you to cross over all of these difficulties. 所以您必须要满怀信心，确信 Krishna 之觉一定能帮助您克服、跨越所有这些重重的。And when you have diffi more difficulties, then you have to do more devotional service. You have to increase your hearing and chanting. 嗯，当您遇到了更多的困难，那么您必须要更加坚决，从事更多的念诵和聆听。The more we're in difficulty, the more we feel problem. The more we want to take shelter of Krishna. Krishna is there to protect you. We 越是遇到困难，就我们就越要脱离 Krishna， 因为 Krishna 就在那里保护着您。So you have some difficulties. You can, if the devotee doesn't want to help you or not interested, you should approach Krishna. Krishna will hear you. 当您遇到困难的时候，倘若奉献者对您的困难不感兴趣的话，您应该去找 Krishna. Krishna 会聆听您的困难。Krishna is there, and your spiritual teacher also takes shelter of a spiritual teacher. They can help you. Krishna 就在那里。而且，灵性导师还有灵性导师，您要脱避于一位灵，脱避灵性导师，灵性导师也会来帮助您。And they will tell you, do more hearing and chanting. 他们会告诉您，嗯、呃，更做更从事更多的聆听和从事更多的念诵、唱诵。And、get more involved, become more active in devotional service. 更多的从事于奉献服，更多的卷入到奉爱服的活动当中去。And you'll pass over all of these difficulties. 这样您就能跨越所有这些困难了。So the best thing to do is just hold on to Krishna, become more and an active, more busy in Krishna's service. 所以最好的办法就是紧紧的抓住 Krishna， 嗯，更更多的从更忙碌的从事奉爱服务，从事更多的奉爱服务。嗯。But if you're thinking, oh, I have this problem, oh, I'm getting, te I have this test, oh, it's so many troubles, oh, it's so many difficulties. That is the mind. These things are all in our mind. 如果您在那里就一味着哀叹，哎呦，我又遇到这问题了，哎呦，这考验太太重了吧，哎呦，这麻烦太多了吧，那这
，这就是您的心意的问题。那一切都在心意当中。So you have to strengthen your mind with topics, hearing more about Krishna and chanting more about Krishna and doing more service for Krishna. 你要强化自己的心意，来谈述、谈论更多有关 Krishna 的话题。You may say, "Oh, I'm chanting sixteen rounds. I'm following four prints," but then you're not doing enough. You're not following enough. You're not strict enough. You have to become more strict. Ah, you 可能会反驳说，哎呦，我已经念诵十六圈了呀，我已经遵守四项原则了，那还不够。您。还要更加严格，您遵守的不够严格，您要更多的、更加严格、更多的去从事奉献服务。All right, we will stop here. Good day. Have you any question? Have you any question? Yes. Okay. 好的。嗯，还有李丽萍马德基的问题。来，点麦咕噜，佛家三哥第。五章第二十九世节，就是那个和平故事那个时点。嗯、呃。要真正运用到生活当中，就是这个世界要真正运用到生活当中。嗯、呃，仅有坚定信心和臣服奎什呢，就能达到平和了吗？还是要必须纯粹的念诵后才能发展的奎什呢？就是他的教导的坚定信心，完了才达到。Yeah, we have to chant purely. To, do we have to chant purely to come to the platform of peace? Is that what she said? Five. Five yeah. yeah. If we want to uh, apply this uh, verse in our practical life and become peaceful, is that that we should we need uh, faith and we need to surrender to Krishna, or we have to chant uh, purely? After that, can we become peaceful? <laughs> well. Yes, of course. If if you say faith and surrender to Krishna, in order to have faith and surrender to Krishna, you have to chant. You cannot separate these things. You can you cannot say I've surrendered, I have faith, but you don't chant. If you have sur if you have faith and you've surrendered, then you must be chanting, and you must be chanting without offense. 就是这个有信心和臣服，以及臣就是念诵臣这两个事情是不是分开的？他们是，呃，就是如果你要是有信心，您也臣服了，那么您肯定就必须要念诵，而且是要没有冒犯的念诵。The only way to approach Krishna in the Kali Yuga is by chanting the holy name. It's very important to chant the holy name. 在卡里年代，接近 Krishna 的唯一方法就是通过圣名，这一点是非常重要的。嗯、so, yeah, you want to, you want, you, you have, you have surrendered to Krishna. Surrender means to accept everything favorable for devotional service. Means you have to chant. 嗯，您提到臣服，什么是臣服呢？臣服就是接受有利于奉爱服务的事物。那什么是有利的呢？那就是念诵。好嘞。嗯，好的，陆队，我我我还有一个小问题。哦。就是今天今天我们讲到的，就是说半身人，他是接受者。那是不是就说明我们没有资格从这个主的
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I I didn't get Hare. I didn't. Demigods are the real re recipients of Lord. That means that we don't have the, uh, um, the qualification to directly receive the mercy from the Lord. Uh, I didn't get it all. We, we don't have the qualification to directly re receive the mercy from the Lord. What? Why? Of course, we have to. We have, we have to get. We have to get the mercy of a devotee. The mercy of the devotee comes. The Lord's mercy will come through the devotees. Krishna rarely gives mercy. Krishna, he Krishna rarely gives, he will rarely deliver someone because Krishna becomes controlled by his pure devotees. Krishna, just like Krishna had to become the charioteer for Arjuna, and Krishna had to become a messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthira, and Krishna had to be tied up by Mother Yashoda. Mm. And he became this, the charioteer for Arjuna. He became the chariot driver for Arjuna. So, so Krishna doesn't give mercy usually directly, but his mercy will come through his devotees. Krishna is the devotees of Krishna are more merciful than Krishna. And because they know the purpose of Krishna. So you get Krishna you get Krishna's mercy through the devotees. So we say by the mercy of Krishna we get a spiritual teacher. And then by the mercy of the spiritual teacher, then you get Krishna. How to understand the demigods? What? Uh, how to understand the demigods? are the real recipients of Lord's mercy. Well, Indra is saying they're not. Indra is giving arguments to prove that the demigods didn't get Lord Krishna's mercy. Uh, Indra, 
提出了论点，就是说他们并不是主的，嗯、呃，仁慈的真正的接受者，而且他就提举了好几个例子。He's giving many examples how the Lord, Lord, the Lord didn't. He didn't care about Indra. He didn't care about the demigods. He stopped the Indra Yagya. <laughs> 主他例举的例子就是说，他说主根本就不在乎半神，他甚至停止了阻止了对英哲的祭祀英哲 Yagya. But in the beginning. You remember that when Narada Muni was in the the southern kingdom with the king, the king was saying about the demigods that they're really the great devotees. They've really got the mercy of Krishna, and he gave examples about how they've got the mercy of Krishna, because uh, everybody listens to them and they act on behalf of the Lord, and they're controlling so many affairs of the universe. 之前，当拿尔的穆尼在，呃，遇见南方那位国王的时候，那位国王就是说，嗯，半神人们，他们就是他们是管理宇宙的事物，然后人们，人们都听从半神的命令。And Indra, the king of heaven, he can bring someone to heaven if he wants. 而且。Indra 就天堂的国王，如果他乐意的话，他可以呃将一个让允许一个人进入到天堂。And、so that's a sign that he's got the mercy of the Lord. 哦，所以这就是他得到主的仁慈的这个特征。That his power, he's got that power, he's got that position, that authority in the universe. 他的这份力量，他的这个地位，他的这个权威，他这个这个宇宙事物当中的权威、力量、地位。Yeah. Maharaj, you, you, then、uh, Lord Chaitanya. So does that mean that in Kali Yuga we receive the Lord's mercy through、uh, Lord Chaitanya, who pretend to be a devotee? Oh yes. But how do you get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya? You have to go to Lord Nityananda to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Subhadra Maharaj asked a question、uh, relevant to the Shamataka jewel. She asked that the、uh, Krita Varma is uh, uh, at the end of the battle of Kurukshetra. Krita Varma and Duryodhan and Ashvatthama, the three of them, these two killed, made a havoc to the something like that. Uh, he uh, Krita Varma per, uh, participated in in the party of Duryodhan and what and he he Krita Varma also uh, encouraged. Uh, That、uh, that person to kill、uh, Satya Bama's father, and Spider Madaji said that it seems that he is not good, not so good. Yes, but actually he's a devotee of Krishna. Okay. Ah, 就是 Spider Madaji 说就 Quit Varma， 他嗯。加入那个独有的地方，但嗯，那马上说，是的，但是他是 Krishna 奉献者。Just like Akrura, Akrura is also the devotee. Akrura and Krita Varma, they're both devotees of Krishna, great devotees of Krishna, but they got involved in some bad thing. They did something bad. They got involved with the Shamantaka Jew. 嗯，呃，就像 Akrura, Akrura。呃，和奎达瓦尔玛，他们都是主的奉献者，但是他们卷入了一些不好的事件，比如说就像上面他们的宝石的事件。And they told。他们就告诉让那个人去偷宝石。And the,、uh, it meant the death, Satra Satrajit. 
who, had, who was having this Shamantaka Joe, he was killed, he was murdered. Satrajit was the father of Satyabhama, who was the wife of Lord Krishna. So one reason, one possible explanation why they got involved with this stealing of the Shaimantaka jewel was they were, they, they were devotees of Krishna and they were very angry at Satrajit because Satrajit, he had blamed Krishna when his jewel went missing. So, Satrajit, uh, he was saying so many bad things about Krishna and everybody in Dwarka was thinking, oh, Krishna stole the Shaimantaka jewel. So Krishna had to go and get the Simon Takaju and go and find it and bring it back and show them that I never that he never took it, somebody else had taken it. So Krishna so that was one reason, possible reason, why they got involved in the stealing of the Shamantaka Jo when they're supposed to be great devotees of Krishna. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Hada, good day. Oh, no Okay. So, we'll stop here. Thank you, Guru Mani. Thank you, Sati. Thank all the devotees. So, take care.